Okay, first of all, I wish I could say more stuff here, but Paula will sue me if I do that, and I'm not kidding. So what you're about to see is the best we can do. The way to overcome a phobia of elevators is the same way to overcome the fear we feel while trading. You just do it until it's not scary. Our brains make it seem like events in the past were easily predictable or preventable when they were not. I love this story because not everyone is capable of trading all day. Decision fatigue refers to the deteriorating quality of decisions made by an individual after a long day or slash and after doing something mentally intensive. Our decisions often get worse as time goes on, and boredom and impulsive trades are one symptom of this fatigue. Or, we'll get restless, deviate from our plan, and just take a trade for the fun of it. Doing something mentally intensive makes the quality of our decisions deteriorate, and trading is certainly intensive. Not everybody is capable of maintaining the ability to make logical decisions for several hours. This topic deserves its own video, but multitasking is something that is very misunderstood. You can't watch a show and write a paper at the same time, and this applies to any other activity that requires concentration. I will keep it really simple though, since I just want to briefly mention this. We have conscious and unconscious processes. You and I can hold a conversation with each other and tie our shoes at the same time. Why? Because we have tied our shoes so many times that it has become an unconscious process. We can do it automatically without devoting any mental energy to it. Have you ever asked someone a question who was texting a message on their phone? A lot of people don't even process that something has been said to them for several seconds, or they don't even respond until they're done typing. It's something I find hilarious. So next time you see someone who's really focused and texting something on their phone, ask them a complex question and hopefully you get a funny reaction. I'm saying this to reinforce name redacted message about concentration. He's correct, and psychological research backs it up. We can't watch a show while trading and perform well while completely retaining what has happened on the show. People who watch shows while writing an essay take way longer to complete it, plus they won't even retain that much of what they watched. Multitasking is not a real thing in the sense that concentration cannot be split in half. It just takes you twice as long. For tasks that don't require full concentration, you can listen to music. I feel like the whole trading without emotions thing is misinterpreted sometimes. We don't learn how to stop feeling, we learn how to not let our emotions cloud our judgment. We change the way we react to how we feel. We do not remove the way we feel. Sure. Repeated exposure to something that makes us nervous or scared reduces those feelings over time, but part of that is because we learn how to deal with it, not because those feelings just stop entirely. The individual trade isn't as important as the end result of all those trades combined. In order to see if something works, the sample size has to be large enough to accurately make conclusions from it. I think you all know that trading after some negative event is a bad idea. Even if you're just a little upset or frustrated, it's probably in your best interest to just step away from the computer. We already know how badly emotions can cloud our judgment. This is especially important for those of you who experience higher levels of emotions, which is referred to as neuroticism in personality psychology. When self-confidence becomes euphoria and delusions of grandeur, that's when we take catastrophic losses. We lose the ability to manage risk because we end up in a state of mind that is elevated into a different reality. Stop losses and profit taking levels should be defined before the trade, not during it. Our brains seek patterns in everything. We look for correlations, connections, and other things that help us make sense of the world. It's part of how we learn. With this comes something called illusory thinking, which I will just briefly mention. This is where we make connections where they don't exist. Ever heard of knock on wood, jinx, or karma? Are you telling me that there is some supernatural force that is going to jinx me if I don't touch a piece of wood with my knuckles after making some statement? Pair that with confirmation bias, and this is why people believe in these things. They ignore when karma doesn't happen. They ignore when not walking on walking. They ignore when not knocking on wood doesn't stop something good from happening. And they continue to wear a lucky pair of socks because last time they wore them, their favorite sports team won. It sounds ridiculous when I say it, but almost all of us do it. I stop myself from saying these things in real life because I'm not going to be that guy who's like, uh, actually, that's confirmation bias paired with the human tendency to create connections between two unrelated events. Why don't I share these things? Because I like having friends. Be careful about making connections between two events while trading. I'm getting really busy with finals for the end of the first semester, but I will try my best to fuel the YouTube addiction while I procrastinate studying for my drug abuse and counseling psychology class. <laughs> 
Smells like irony. Mark, random guy who has no relation to the point here is that we don't know when a trade is going to work, and consistent profitability happens through the cumulative results of our trades, continuing to reinforce the point of having a wider perspective. We don't know which trades will work, but to a certain degree, we can assume the overall results of 100 trades. That's why we need to lower the emphasis on individual trade results. There are many reasons that price action is interpreted as a threat by our brain, resulting in a physiological response that can cause poor judgment and maladaptive behavior. If you think you know what will happen next and have unrealistic expectations, then part of the market being perceived as a threat will be due to its potential to go against your grandiose beliefs about yourself. In other words, something happening that goes against your belief is a threat to who you are. If you think it's going to go up, and it goes down, suddenly you think the market is questioning your intelligence, on a subconscious or conscious level. This causes cognitive dissonance, but I already talked about that in my video called The Psychology of Staying and Losing Trades. There's a big difference between intuition and what we hope will happen. The whole tapping into our mind's pain or the accumulation of negative events is not really empirical, but the idea of fear affecting our interpretations is spot on. In the woods at night, you're on edge and you hear a stick crack next to you. You might think, bear, fear affects the way we think. Thinking affects our emotions. Emotions affect our behaviors. This is the cognitive triangle, which is all about how our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors all affect each other, can cause each other, and so on and so forth. It seems like some people spend hours and hours analyzing the charts on all time frames with different candles, different indicators, and moving averages to break down every tiny detail in the market to see what might happen next. And we can do that, and that's good, because we can use that to familiarize ourselves with price action. We can look at how it moved, but we don't know why it did. And we don't need to know that why in order to make money. I'm in from the future here, which by the way is not my real name, and no, I'm not from the Middle East. I basically have the world record for most white person. Isaac is, my, <laughs> Isaac is my real name. Anyways, let's talk about some completely unrelated things. You will never know why price actually moved unless the people who actually moved it tell you why they did it. Unless you have access to them, you're just guessing, which is all that any of us can do unless you want to break the law. You know, do a little insider trading. <laughs> And you should disconnect reasons from why a trade worked, because you will never truly know the reason why anything worked, as stated above. Also, all trades exist independently of each other. Something working once doesn't mean it'll work again. Something not working doesn't mean it won't work again, or whatever, I don't, you know. There is no connection. No two moments are the same. Focus on the process rather than the results, because the results aren't going to be good for a while. If we focused on results, as beginners, we would just be miserable all the time, because... I don't know. Who knows anything about anything? I'll well, just going on anecdotal evidence here, but you know, people say it takes a few years to become consistently profitable. So if you focus on the results until you're consistently profitable, you're just going to be sad all the time because you're just losing money. You know, you're just going to go from euphoria when you do well to devastation when you do terribly. So focus on uh, acquiring skills because if you get the skills and experience, then the money will just be a byproduct. Also, the brain makes connections that don't actually exist. But you already know that, because you already, you saw all my videos, you you watch all my videos all the way through, and you don't, and adblock is disabled when you do it, because you're like, I just want to give them s four cents, I want to give you three pennies. That's the best we can do, unfortunately. I couldn't put anything in here that put the video at risk of being taken down again. Anyway, sorry for not uploading. I pretty much uh, lost all motivation after she did that. All I wanted to do was make a video exposing her for who she really is and um, talk to a lawyer, and they didn't help me at all, so I'd still really love to get an answer on uh, whether I would get sued or not if I exposed her entire email. Because uh, it's not defamation if it's true. Alright, thank you. Hope this helped you. This is the best we can do, given the circumstances. Bye-bye.